as the algorithm allows. You have uh, uh, array algorithms, vector algorithms, but you have actually several types of executions which we forget to mention it, usually. We have single data, single instruction, which is a typical scalar processing, which is necessary because algorithms by themselves are stepwise. I cannot be now in that room down there. Well, it's very close where normally we go, all the, all the uh, emperors go by feet, the toilet. I cannot be there without making a certain amount of sequential steps. We have also single instruction multiple data, which is very, very important in computing. It's all the vectors, all the arrays, which even sparse arrays, if you <laughs> do it properly, you do one instruction on all the data. But we have also multiple instruction single data. What if you want to have a sine and cosine? It's a multiple instruction single data Inst thing. You need several of them. Uh, and we have multiple instruction, multiple data. That's quite easy. A lot of computers do multiple instructions on multiple data. However, if you combine it into one form, linguistical form, you have all the control here. For example, you have a big array and a big array of functions which you want to apply to that big array. And that is then multiple data, multiple instruction approach. So, uh, what came out is virtue, a programming system, environment, language, uh, something like that, which I just put some basic features here. It has a very simple grammar, but it has a, a very highly developed semantics. And that is what we forget. It's a contextual language, so you can't, it always depends on the previous kind of what you did. It's interactive. It has algorithmic knowledge about quite a lot of things. It has an inbuilt memorization. Memorization is a way of preserving the previous results for future calculation. With memorization, you can actually get results. I will tell you just, just one short, okay, let's finish, we'll uh, come back. Intermixable data types. Any type will do something with another type. For example, a character you can always multiply by one or zero. It's quite obvious. Take once this A. You can't multiply it by three, a character string, but by one you can multiply it, which allows you actually a common normal thinking, take once this time, uh, thing. Uh, Multidimensional spaces as scalars, and quite interesting is the multidimensional multi-resource files, where each file can have actually a specific structure defined. When you open a file, you define a structure in which data in that particular file are. And then when you put it in a huge matrix, then all those files can collect data from wherever you like. You multiply them and put them back, something in that, this kind of things. And then finally, it's IDEOM le learning. That is something which is not implemented yet. Most of those things were good perfectly or are just being implemented. And the whole thing presently works on SMPs, multiprocessors. It is reasonably easy to expand it to GPUs, but we didn't have time to, to do it. And of course, uh, because the internal structure is, tech, is such, it can easily, because it was conceptually thought from the very beginning with the cluster and grid in mind, it can easily be used on a grid. So, uh, virtual language is actually a part of the virtual interactive resource tasking universal environment. What does mean interactive, you understand? A resource tasking would mean that actually the system would employ those resources in a whole thing, which are applicable for the specific thing. So if you need 1,000 processors for processing, you would get 1,000 processors. But if you need five serial processors, then you won't waste the 1,000 processors just to wait. Some other user can use them. And finally, just uh, so this is a software linguistic environment. And the next step we are now preparing is the hardware linguistic environment or a virtual infrastructure machine, a kind of micro supercomputer which would have virtual as the assembly language. 
Much more would be too much. I'll be finished in half a minute. This is just a little teaser. A Conaway's game of life in virtue. It works perfectly. <laughs> I don't think you saw this algorithm much shorter. What it does, actually, uh, you have the mask, which uh, takes, actually, uh, this array, 3 times 3 of 1s and then 1, 0, 1, 1, and applies this mask to each element of an input array, which is somewhere here coming into this function, which is monadic, which just takes one. Then you take this and take parts, 3 times 3, which are then, pon uh, uh, those are the ponders of that. You multiply it. And this is then that particular uh, area, which can be any dimensional, like in uh, meteorology or wherever you use this kind of thing, is the input for the function here, which just simply says, OK, what's the sum of those there? If it is two and a half, three, or three and a half, any of those three, then you will get a one, which then the mask instruction puts on a proper place of the array. So uh, the way of con concisely expressing. Now, when you call that life, you can use this function by building your language up on those levels. Thank you very much. Uh, any answers? <laughs> Perhaps questions? Sorry? I see you had to put the semicolon. Uh, well, actually, this semicolon you can write like end function. It's <laughs> not a semicolon. You were complaining about uh, Yes, but it's, it's quite simple. Uh, the semicolon, uh, instead of writing uh, uh, ar ar one argument function, you can write monadic. Instead of writing end function, you can just put a semicolon. Instead of writing end, you can just put a dot. <laughs> so uh, virtue has synonyms. Like, for example, sometimes you need an interval. So you say, one, well, from 1 to 100, interval. But sometimes you need a space, like a complex space up to 10i10 10 or 20i20. So then the interval you can call space. For example, subtraction is actually always centering of vectors or spaces. As soon as you subtract something from a vector, you will center it around that zero there. So subtract has a synonym as center. It's conceptually easier to think about centering in that moment and sometimes about subtracting. But conceptually, they're exactly the same semantics. OK, oh, any more? Oh. All right, oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I forgot to take that off because actually this is the problem which is very big for us all. <laughs> and I hope this kind of approach could solve at least to get it somehow balanced, you know. <laughs>